Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm participating in Stencil Girl Zine Challenge. So a zine is a small book, mini book, made out of an A4 sheet of paper. Um, it's cut up, it's a really simple thing to make. It was made a long time ago because it's easy to photocopy, you could um, spread information out really, really easy to others and just chuck it through the photocopier and then fold them up into these little mini books. So to start off with, I'm just making a bit of a collage matrix in the background. I'm using my favourite colour combination, which is heather, marine, turquoise, um, blushing and mineral, which is sort of a, a grey-blue colour. And just sort of a really easy um, colour combination to use, sort of very ephemeral, very oceany, no real rhyme or reason to it. It's just one I really like. Then I'm going in with some vintage text. So this is all um, from a French dictionary. Just using some um, gel medium to glue it down. And then I'm going in with some patterned tissue paper. I think this is from Natalie May. So there is no rhyme or reason to how I'm sticking stuff down on here. Same with the paint. I am just painting and gluing. The great thing about making up pages like this is the fact that when they're folded up into books, they're all going to be in different ways upside down inside out so it really doesn't matter what direction you're going to be gluing anything in um, it's just a really funky way to make a sort of abstracty background um, really really easily just going in now with mic making stencils oh, not my stencil sorry stamps um, in black just to add a little black to the page and same with my stylo or pencil around those pieces of text just to sort of frame them a little bit which will help them stick out in the background um, once I'm finished. So I'm just drying everything off. Everything I've used is acrylic paint um, which I just prefer to work in. Um, it makes things a lot easier especially when I know I'm going to be gluing things over the top and I knew in this little book that I'm just going to be gluing stuff. I've also added in a little bit of mic making with my white Posca paint pen just adding big dots of white across the page because I'm very good at not ha having white space on my page. This is where I'm getting to the stenciling. So to combine everything onto the page and give it a little bit of unity, I'm going in with the stencil. So this first one is um, one designed by uh, Mary Shaw, who runs the company, the stencil girl company, and beautiful sort of broken circles. This one's called Pebble Path, and again, large, very organic shapes. And I suppose that's what I was looking for in this, was sort of those organic shapes. I'm also taking colours from the background, so I'm using some of the marine, I'm using some buff, which is sort of that really neutral colour, and I'm using some night, which is a darker blue colour, to sort of really blend in with what I've got in the background. I want to really highlight those sort of blue vintage tones to this piece. I've also taken a picture um, as I went along when I finished my collage matrix, and I always do that um, for two reasons. One, it helps me um, know what I like, and two, uh, it means I can print it out in the future and use it again. The, here I am making my zine. I've done a long fold across the middle, then I'm doing four, folded it into quarters. And then, just to make it really obvious, um, I'm cutting in between those two middle pieces. I just use my craft knife to do that. Um, that was going to give me a much cleaner cut. I'm then going round with a black marker and it's just because I don't like the white edges um, and I'm also doing the top because that will be seen. You can see when I fold up my book and I know there's going to be some information in the blog post um, this video is attached to of how to fold this up but if you look for a zine fold magazine or a zine fold um, book you'll find lots of stuff on the internet about it. Now one thing that um, I like to do with my zines is I do like to tape them up or glue them together so the pages all stick together. Um, in this case I'm using the washi tape. So with the washi tape you can see I'm sort of tearing off little bits and pieces. I'm using it to bind up the edges so I don't have any edges opening. And all the little bits I'm chopping off I'm sort of putting in between and over the top of the book just to add a bit of extra in, um, interest. The, the tape that I'm using sort of has the same colour scheme as my background, so it sort of all blends together anyway. Um, in the past, when I've done this, I have glued the pages together, but also I've kept them loose so I could fold pockets into them or um, stick tags into them. So it really depends on what you want to do with your little book um, and how you want to do it. Um, if it's like me and 
you're using it as a little book, well, it doesn't matter if it ages or close. If you are using it in its traditional form of actually being able to be photocopied, obviously you need to be able to unfold it again to make your, um, your A4 page that you can photocopy. So within this book, I just wanted to be really, really simple. And I'm just using some of the Tim Holtz um, doll pieces and vintage dolls. Some ephemera bits and bobs I got from, I think it's a stamp, Peria possibly, chipboards, um, sort of all Bauhaus type images. There's some quirky ones in there of different artists and different bits and pieces, which I liked sort of the contrast of. So it's a bit of mix and match of odd things. But what I did want to do with this was sort of have um, kind of artistic quotes on each page. So it's sort of like a little inspiration booklet that you could give to someone. And I'm just chucking everything in here with some glue, cutting off the bits and pieces that don't belong, um, being a bit haphazard about it. And basically, I suppose, on each page, I want to have sort of a main-ish figure and leave some area for a quote of some sort. Um, with my front page, I decided to use this lady. And like I always do with these things, I do like putting... Um, wings on people so I think I peel her off a little bit and chuck a wing in somewhere as I go along. Um, it also had these climped, I think it's climped circles um, in the package so I decided to use some of those, got some little quotes and um, writing and so on so I was really just trying to think on my feet a little bit because sometimes this can be the longest process of I've made my book now what am I going to put into it so I do like to give myself a little bit of a time limit I do like to give myself just use the stuff in front of you um, to complete these things and sometimes it's not right to be honest you know particularly the front page is bugging me it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to um, but that's that's how I work so I didn't show you the entire process of decorating the whole book um, but you'll see them in the pages upcoming. This is a close-up of my matrix. This is how my woman on the front page ended up with her wings and her crown and the creative quote on it about art. And then you can see the insides of my pages. So you can see I've added the quotes, um, I've added little party hats, I've added buttons and more butterflies. Um, with the quotes, I have edged them so that um, they've got that little black border on them as well, just so they stand out a little bit. Um, you can also see those little bits of washi and how they've blended into the page as well. Um, put some weird and wonderful hats on them. Um, you can see more butterfly wings on that page. And on the back, I've got the quote, don't quit your daydream, which I really like, especially when it comes to a book about art. So I hope you have a go at making your own art scene or um, make college matrix paper and zines. They're lots of fun to make, really quick and easy. It's a great project to do with kids as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.